tell you what Montessori means to me, I see that it's the way forward, so it's the holy grail of aged care. Um, it breaks my heart walking through aged care facilities and seeing our older adults um, sitting on chairs along walls, sleeping, you know, curled up in their chair in an awkward position. You know, that's not what our older people deserve. So, you know, Montessori isn't about what I want or what you want. It's all about what is ethically right for our older adults. <laughs> Montessori really is about a new way to deliver aged care and it's a total paradigm shift where we move to a model that focuses on strengths and on capabilities rather than on deficits. It is based on the original work of Dr Maria Montessori and it is her philosophy and vision, I guess, that transfers over into the aged care environment where we're talking about um, enabling people to be as independent as possible. So the components of a Montessori environment are things like signage and cue cards and scheduling for people. When we're talking about enabling people to be as independent as possible and to function to their highest possible level, we need to support the person by supporting their environment. We do that by using directional sign, um, signs, for example, for using task breakdown so that people are able to dress themselves independently, uh, by using fine motor skill activities that enable them to relearn the skills that they've lost as a result of um, their cognitive impairment. So creating a Montessori environment comprises all of those elements. We also need to address the issues of self-esteem and that people feel valued and feel needed. And so we do that by creating roles for people and enabling them to engage in being, um, contributing to their environment. And of course, the best way to do that is with roles. So, so many times in aged care, in traditional aged care, staff are doing jobs that could be done by residents. Um, staff wheel trolleys, they empty rubbish bins, they sweep floors, they clear tables, they set tables. These are all jobs that people living with dementia and other residents in aged care can all do. They're able to do it, they've done it for many years and it's using um, skills that they've had often over a long period of time. Residents feel so good about Montessori, they feel empowered, they feel great that they can be active and participate in activities, well, you know, really good activities that help the facility and they felt very valued because of it. Uh, changing staff from doing so much for the residents and they've been so task orientated to stepping back and enabling the resident to do it for themselves. The most rewarding outcome for me has been to see the interaction between the residents. They've gone from sitting around not really talking to one another, engaging with one another, to now a lot of conversation about have you done your task or do you need a hand with your task. One man springs to mind um, that in one of our um, facilities his head was down and he was very sad, but he's been given the role and the task of delivering the mail in that facility. And um, every time I go there now, he's, um, he's so proud of what he does. And he, he's just, his shoulders are back and his head's back and he just smiles and chats now. It's just like, um, I mean, it, it, it seems unbelievable that um, delivering the post for someone on a daily basis can make that much difference, but that's the only change that he's had in his life, so I assume that it's for that, and yeah, it's just wonderful to see. And I've seen little changes like that through all our seven facilities um, with our residents, yeah, it's amazing. Um, I mean, I think that the job roles is particularly the way to empower residents. Your life is defined by the roles you are, 
and think about when our residents come in, you know, they often don't see their friends and family. So the only role they've got is the role of resident, you know, and would you like that role? You know, it, it, it's, they're such, they're, they can often be such passive recipients of care. Whereas when they're actually invited to help, and this generation, they love to help. This is this is who they are. You know, they're the Aussie battlers. They've always, um, you know, they've they've helped their neighbour. They've borrowed sugar from the next door neighbour. You know, they've they've always helped. That's what got them through the depression and the war years. So you're tapping into the core essence of who that person is and who that person's always been. So it may seem like something little, like delivering the mail, but to that person, they feel like they're contributing. Um, and that they belong, and um, that they've got a great way to spend their day. The decision to create Montessori environments is a huge decision for any organisation. Okay. It involves changing everything that they've always done and looking at new ways to deliver care and new ways to deliver a service. It involves changing policies, it involves changing um, many of the practices that up until this point have been acceptable and have been um, appropriate. I guess Catholic Homes decided to go down this path because we were in a position where everything was ticking over okay, so there wasn't any dramas and we didn't have any other pressures on business. And then um, basically through our senior OT and our executive manager of care at the time, they were looking at some enhancements that we could do to the culture. I don't think anyone had planned it was going to be so big, but um, it, I guess it was just a good time for us to be able to look at how we could really make a difference. Um, finances are always a big thing in any organisation, but being cost effective wasn't one of the priorities. And to be honest, I don't think there is actually any cost associated with it when you see the outcomes. So down the track for me, I actually think for the organisation, it will be very cost effective because people will be part of a community and just doing things that they would normally do at home or that you would normally do to support other people in the community. So I think while there is a, probably an upfront investment and there's obviously an ongoing investment in maintaining its sustainability, um, it certainly hasn't been one of those things where I thought, oh my goodness, the cost of this outweighs any of the benefit or is a big noticeable item on the budget. It hasn't been that at all. So one of the simplest things that we've put in place is the use of the name badges. So there's always pros and cons. People always worry that this is a resident's home and that having name badges, you wouldn't have them in your home. Um, but we, we need to remember that people with dementia um, people with old adults or new staff or agency staff, um, they, they don't know people's names and so we need to give them that, that support in their environment. So by pu purchasing a name badge for $7 and everyone's starting to wear them, we've seen an amazing change in our residents. Our residents are now empowered to greet us first rather than us always having to say, oh, hello, Joyce, how are you? They can go, oh, hi, Elizabeth. And so they are initiating the conversation, which is the one of the things that you often don't see in a residential care facility. Often they um, require us to initiate, um, but by the use of something as simple as a $7 name badge, um, we are then empowering our residents um, our families are really interested in getting name badges as well um, and it's great um, that the organisation has embraced it so rather than having you know a big logo with a little name and no one being able to actually read it um, now by having it as a full, si full size name badge I mean it just makes perfect sense. Uh, our ACFI funding um, has not there has been no change in the ACFI funding and in fact we are still having a small increase as we normally do when we concentrate or spend extra time focusing on ACFI so really no change in our ACFI funding at all. Once we started the journey we um, realised how important it is to make sure that the board of management was on side or our board that um, governs the organisation and it's not really a governance issue, but it certainly is something that um, is representative of the individual organisation. So we spent time talking to them about it and we brought in our senior OT, Elizabeth, who did a presentation as well. We also provide them with three monthly updates about things that are happening and the changes that have happened and the celebrations that we've had. And we also um, invite them if there's any training or there's any launches, we invite them to those as well. So they feel very 
comfortable being part of the ongoing change to the culture of the organisation. Um, we have got Montessori in three of our units um, and we're going to roll it across the whole of the site. Um, we're slowly implementing it at the moment um, in the other five areas because um, everyone needs a purpose to get out of bed in the morning and a reason to get up and enjoy their life. So some of the challenges that have been associated with implementing is um, the fact that it's such, um, it's such a big change. It, it changes everything that you do from, from the way you interview someone to your documentation system to your policies and procedures to the way you speak to a resident, to the way you plan an activity program. So every part of your service is impacted by having this philosophy. So that is, the, that is the hardest thing, is that everything that you've done for the 10 years I've been in aged care is you have to reconsider it and think, you know, is this the best way? Is there a better way? I think mostly the challenges that we've had with trying to put the Montessori model in place is actually um, staff related. It's actually changing the mindset of care staff from being really task orientated to, you know, first thing in the morning we have to get these things done and residents have to be dressed and showered before morning tea and having a very structured um, facility rather than, you know, it's okay to, to leave for someone in bed if they're still asleep and, you know, you can't wake them up. Um, so. Mostly it's been the, um, the care staff just trying to change the mindset but a lot of the times when they actually see the improvements, you know, like I said, the behaviours reducing, um, less wandering, um, more happier engaging residents, they actually come on board. Well, um, we have had negative staff right from the beginning. Um, there's always been a few. We've tried lots of different things. We've tried um, showing the staff what a benefit Montessori has been for the residents. That has brought a few of them around because they, they like to see that the residents were happier and more involved. But there's always been one or two and I can truly say the only thing that has brought those difficult ones around was when we got Montessori training for everybody. That put us all on the same path and changed that negativity. The most difficult part has been changing the attitude of staff from wanting to do everything for that resident they're so task orientated that they, it's been difficult for them to stand back and allow the resident to do things without their help. The more we do for people, the more we steal from people. And I think that that's a really powerful statement um, and something that sh we should be guided by in our work. The more we do for people, the more we steal from them. And we should be encouraging people to be the very best that they can be. Um, we've, I've set the environment up in our area. So when the resident comes out uh, in the morning, if it's early hours in the morning, um, there is always something for them to do. Um, we've got signs up for them to say, um, come and fold the washing. Uh, we also do um, individual activities um, for motor skills and, and there's always something set up because uh, some people get up at three o'clock in the morning so we have it all set up. So notice if a resident um, it gets upset at a certain time of day we set them a, a task that they do. Uh, we have one um, gentleman who at 1.30 we've noticed that he gets upset, so that's cry. So we, um, he has a role that he delivers the recycled newspaper to a new, uh, recycled box. So at 1.30 he will go off and he will collect the newspapers and deliver it to the box. And that seems to help him. I'm a lady I've been working with, um, um, she, um, she has her good days and her bad days. Yesterday, I, um, she doesn't talk very much. When she talks, it's one word, so she likes to spell things out. She doesn't actually put a full sentence together. Yesterday, I walked by her just before lunchtime, and she sort of reached out a hand to my hand, and she actually pulled me closer to her, and she sort of put a hand around my, around my head and got me really close, and she said, my name is Thomas, Bernie Thomas, and I've got nothing to do. 
and I almost I almost just cried in that instant because it's the, since I've been working with her which has been more than a year now and since I've been working here which is more than two years she's never actually put a sentence together and it just made me think you know I'm working with her at lunchtime but look it's it's starting to manifest into to other things as well so for her being able to first of all put a sentence together introduce herself as as her name um and just like observing i suppose what everyone else is doing when she's feeling i don't have anything to do and actually asking for it so that was that was a special moment yesterday so it was really good yeah, so with them um, being able to get residents to feed themselves, that's quite, to me, that's one of the most important things. You know, um, being able to eat your own meal, being able to feed yourself, it's really important for independence and for dignity. Um, so at St Vincent's here, because we have residents with very um, advanced dementia, sometimes, um, you know, there's nothing actually wrong with their fine motor skills. They're able to fidget and pick up things and work with objects um, regardless of size or shape um, but it's actually the practicing the task of the actual meal so um, some residents require full assistance so you know actually um, providing your hand over their hand guiding the movement of scooping and lifting and up to their mouth and take, prompting to take a bite um, I guess that's the lowest level that we start at but for residents who um, sometimes they're just not able to scoop their food and a lot of the time, you know, care staff forget that there's actually a continuum of assistance that you can give. Just because a resident can't eat their entire meal on their own doesn't mean you just have to jump in and start feeding them. It's about um, actually finding out what they can do, helping them with what they can't do, but letting them do, you know, what they can do. So if they have trouble putting food on the spoon, you help them to put the food on the spoon and then they might be able to lift up the spoon and put the food in, in their mouth quite easily. So um, just feeding a resident because it's because they're slow or because they're messy um, are not reasons to, you know, take over and as you as you always say, the more you do for them, the more you take away, the more you steal from them. Families have been fantastic about the changes that we've had. They've um, said that they, you know, like they see the, the residents in a whole new light. There's a buzz of activity. They love that the residents have more to talk to them about because they love to tell them about their achievements. You know, I did this today and I did that today. So they're very, very happy. And we've had lots of comments from students, um, visitors, volunteers who say that the whole atmosphere of the facility has changed. There's a lot more going on and they feel that everyone's a lot happier. I was introduced to the Montessori program a couple of years ago. Uh, my mother and I were doing it at home. Um, every day we would do it uh, for a half an hour and it, we, we found such a difference. Um, my mother would be happy. She always said that she felt um, a lot stronger after, after she'd done the um, exercises and uh, it helped me as well because I felt as if I was contributing uh, to her well-being. Uh, that's why I came to Life Care, um, although it's a, a long distance from where I live, and I do go past many nursing homes or residential care places uh, that are closer to home. I wanted somewhere that would encourage and just give her give her mind and her brain a workout, really, give her something worthwhile to get up in the morning. Um, so I'm very happy that she's here at Life Care on Dinga Beach. As a matter of fact, this is where I'd like to be <laughs> when I, when I, when I uh, need nursing home care. My main aim as a manager has been to start a facility or get a facility going that would be the sort of facility that I would like to end up in if I had to. None of us want to go into a home or a facility, but if I had to, Definitely a Montessori facility would be the one I'd want to go in. Um, Montessori for me has been the most rewarding, heartwarming journey and I can't believe we've got it so wrong for so long. If you can see the people, busy, happy, engaging, it's just, it's just blows your mind. Yeah, it's just their smile on someone's face and a purpose getting up in the morning.
you have to think what what would the resident want so a lot of it is um, knowing who the person is so knowing what they've done where they've come from what they enjoy doing and then incorporating those things into their normal daily activities so yes it's about making sure that we can get them as independent as possible it's it's a way that you can take some sort of control back. You can give something to the person that you're caring for, as well as feeling as if you're contributing to their care. Now, I've been working in aged care for 30 years and I just knew that what we were doing wasn't right, but I, I just didn't have the answer. And then when I went to the Montessori training the first time, I just thought that's amazing because this is just so simple, but so practical and I'm just so happy that I've had the opportunity to be a part of it and be involved in changing the lives of some of the people in aged care by doing Montessori. Okay, so what Montessori means to me is it's the true essence of being person-centred. So it forgets everything that we've done in the past and it brings us back to what that resident needs at that moment. So, um, you know, and that's why I am so passionate about it because um, you know, we're always trying to work hard and do a good job, but sometimes we miss the point of, you know, why we're here, the fact that we are here for residents. You know, our staff, we, we go home at the end of the day. You know, our residents are here day in, day out. Um, and, you know, what it means to me is that it moves this mindset from just that, you know, of an OT or of lifestyle to become everyone's responsibility. Um, and, and, and that's that's the, gonna, that's the thing that's going to make the change, is that it becomes part of everyone's role.